Thank you for joining us. Our presentation today is called Driving E-Commerce Profits with Personalized Recommendations Using Machine Learning and Graph Analytics. I'm David Ronald, Director of Product Marketing here at TigerGraph, and I'm joined by my colleague, Stephen Fuller, Senior Solutions Engineer. I'll begin our presentation with a few observations, then I'll hand it over to Stephen for a deeper discussion. You may not be familiar with graph databases and graph analytics, but they are important. Gardner, one of the most widely respected market research firms has said this about graph. Graph analysis is possibly the single most effective competitive differentiator for organizations pursuing data-driven operations and decisions after the design of data capture. And Gardner is a huge proponent of, the, of graph analytics and has published a number of reports on the topic. One of these called Understanding When Graph Technologies Are Best for Your Business Use Case by Jim Hare and others is shown here. And it describes six different types of graph analytics. And we'll go around this hexagon starting at the upper left with path, path. How do we find optimal paths or evaluate route availability? Community, where are the clusters? What are the areas of focus? Centricity, what are the most important points in the network, either inside a community or outside of it? Similarity, how similar are nodes or group of, groups of nodes in the network? Link prediction, this is all about determining the likelihood of nodes forming or breaking connections. And last, not least, connectivity. How strong are the connections between nodes? You tie all this together, and it's not much of a leap to say that this can increase e-commerce profits because we can find paths, we can uncover communities, we can identify centricity, we can measure similarity, we can predict links, and we can measure connectivity. And this, all this provides retailers with richer insights into their customers and deeper knowledge than ever before. And I'm reminded here of a comment by a director of data and analytics at a large manufacturer of consumer products. He himself was a recent convert to Graph. who said that Graph enables him and his team to ask questions they never thought they could ask before and have those questions answered. Graph provides retailers like you with unprecedented insights into your customers' likes and dislikes and their buying behavior. And by comparing those patterns to other shoppers informs your next best action and enables you to make, make hyper-personalized recommendations, hyper-personalized recommendations, and therefore more impactful and more and increase the impact and the ability to have an, a cross-sell or an upsell. Just 10 years ago, one nascent business decided to put Graph firmly at the heart of its consumer analytics discipline. This company has skyrocketed to become the third largest e-commerce e marketplace in the US by sales with revenues in excess of 2 billion. And with that, I'll hand things over to Stephen for a deeper exploration of Graph. Thanks, David. Um, I'm gonna pick this up looking at some traditional concepts of how to do customer experience. We're going to look at that and how that looks through a omni-channel retail analytics and how that implies and impacts any customer's experience. Uh, the challenge today for most retailers is to go through and understand how users are accessing their website, how they're interacting with mobile devices, how they're doing uh, digital marketing, uh, even all the way to the things as social commerce. Um, the challenge still remains on how do I create a single omni-channel view of the customer, be able to understand that experience and understand when, where, and how to create an exchange and value across these interactions. Uh, we have always gone through and done marketing, sales, service, insights, retention, advocacy, and of course now we also have this concept of influencers and people who change that. Uh, as a proof point, there's been a recent study that says 
the most exciting opportunity for retailers today is to improve and engage customers to help improve your customer experience. Uh, this is so valuable that most shoppers and most consumers will say that they are more likely to purchase from a retailer based on their experience uh, much more than product or price. Uh, so having the ability to influence and impact your customer experience is one of the most uh, valuable things any retail organization can do. Uh, for today's concept on how uh, machine learning and graph analytics add to this, we're going to look at this as it relates to a traditional sales funnel as it looks through going through a particular e-commerce website where you have a funnel that all visitors come in there are types of events where they're trying to discover a product they're looking at product categories or descriptions uh, there are events that indicate that a consumer is trying to choose a product by looking at the size the color all those different things and then of course there's that last stage of that as someone's going through a purchase funnel to where they're adding comp components to their cart they're giving you their personal information they're adding uh, their shipping info it's where we are now beginning to attach machine learning and connected data here that helps us understand that uh, to build upon the graph algorithms that david spoke of earlier uh, as you begin to look at all your visitors, you can start doing graph analytics, machine learning to understand a community of visitors. Uh, what's the community of visitors that come from a particular site? Uh, what's the community of visitors that are coming from a particular search engine? If they're using a mobile device or a desktop device or a tablet, how do your com uh, communities begin to shape and make whole? The value here is the user is expressing the community they are a part of. Uh, it's not based on demographic variable. It's not based on what location of the country they live in. It's based on things that you know about them in their digital experience. Uh, so we have the ability to do community detection and community algorithms in that way. Uh, we still have graph databases, still have the ability to do the traditional um, segmentation and things of that approach. Uh, but having the ability to do it on digital components is very valuable as well. Uh, the next thing you want to be able to do is understand how a person goes from shopping to discovering. Uh, what are the components? What are the characteristics of that actual session uh, that lend someone to shopping? Is it uh, how long they stayed on a particular page? Uh, how long they looked at a particular item? How much time they spent in choosing a particular size or a brand or a product or color? Uh, all of those things begin to create a path, if you will. So when graph databases do path analysis, think of everything you look at in uh, doing Google Maps. You want to go from your home location to the nearest Starbucks coffee store, uh, and you get multiple paths. That same technology is going to be leveraged off of your clickstream sessionization data on your website, and you can now find the shortest path. Leveraging those capabilities gives you the power to now influence your recommendation engines, gives you now the power to influence product ad placement and promotions that uh, a particular user may see on your website. More importantly, the analytics and machine learning is now going to be tailored on not just what's happening or what has happened, but how do you predict when a person goes from visiting to discovering and from discovering to choosing. Going back to the types of graph algorithms that David mentioned, this is one of the link prediction algorithms. Uh, now that I have understood a consumer's path, i.e. their journey through your website, I can now go find all the people that have a path that's similar to that, and I can begin to predict a linkage that says, at this point, I believe this person is go going to go from discovery to shopping. All of this is based on a graph database that gives you the traditional uh, analytic concepts to understanding which channels are driving most purchases, uh, what are customers outbound preferences, and more importantly, now that I'm collecting this information about their digital experience, can I pick that up and leverage it for email marketing and other marketing channels as well? Um, one of the things that we find very useful is having the ability to create a real-time customer journey, to be able to understand at what point 
and how often and how frequently a customer interacts with your organization in offline channels and online channels. So how often do they look at your social media activities? Uh, when do they look at your website? When do they call into support? And being able to get a time series analysis of that so you now can understand that an average consumer stays in the discovery phase for six weeks. And here are the number of promotions, events, and things that they happen. And now I can use that analysis to determine and predict when someone is going to go from discovery to choose to shopping and to actually begin converted to a customer. Uh, having the ability to visualize that in a customer journey chart and understand the analytics on top of that is very, very, very powerful. Uh, this is a technique that we use for a lot of our retail clients that gives them the ability to not only analyze an individual customer, but to also do that for groups and segments of customers. Uh, the, the next thing becomes is do you have the ability to find similar customers? So say, for instance, you have found 100 people that have become your top social influencers, and you know that they have a particular path, a particular journey, they have a particular uh, score or rank, and now you want to find the next batch of 100 people that are just close to them that you want to also leverage as social influencers or brand advocates as well. Uh, so we can leverage graph algorithms to go find similar customers. You can use this technique for the inverse. Now I want to be able to go see what a path looks like for someone who is about to churn. I can go un understand their path, understand their connections, understand the method that they have interacted with my organization, and then go try to find similar consumers that are going to churn and send out marketing efforts to save them and to do other things as well. This becomes really, really important. Uh, at this point, we can now use graph technology to do the real, the three main things that most retailers want to do to actually improve their profits. Uh, the first one is to do uh, improve cross sell and upsell. Now that you understand the customer's journey, you understand their ability to, uh, and you have some kind of intelligence about how they have interacted with your website in the past, you know what they've seen. Now you can leverage that information for real time product recommendations. The product recommendations can be a combination of what you know about them through their session history, what products they like, uh, what their sizes are and all those different things. Uh, and you can use that to make recommendations. The recommendations are not just product based. They're going to be consumer based because now using graph technology, you have a platform that's fast enough, scalable enough and actually does machine learning in real time that you can actually have your recommendations based on uh, not only their, their information and their usage of your website, but any personal information, um, in whatever their preferences are, and combine that with the products that they have some kind of history of purchasing. That same capability can be extended to next best action. Uh, so you can look at someone's session analysis, look at their clickstream information, and you know where they were in a web journey. Uh, it be a product categorization, categorization or a particular product description itself. And you can now use that to say, here's this next best action. So now when they log back in and revisit your website, not only can you pick their next, you can restore their session, but you can also recommend a product that it would have bought next. Uh, so that becomes really valuable and really important as well. The other components to add into this is now the ability to continue with this technology and allow um, your organization to improve customer satisfaction. So how do I improve customer satisfaction? That is now having the ability to combine offline consumer data with online consumer data. Once a user has converted and they have become a customer of your organization, you pick up their personal inform information, their shipping information, their billing information, and now you have to service them on the back end. You have the ability to understand their communication preferences. You have the ability to understand how they like their packages shipped. And you know if they are a gift buyer or a regular customer or a regular shopper. And you can have all of that personalization information in place 
The next time they visit your website, you can have all that information pre pre filled. So the next time they get ready to purchase a product, they no longer have to give their shipping information again. They no longer have to say hide my package in the bushes because my husband will find it. You have all that information there that gives you that personalized attention. Uh, same thing with channel preferences and channel marketing. Um, does someone want to see receive a text message when their packages arrive? Uh, would they be open to receiving text messages for products of similar nature? All of that becomes uh, capabilities that are inherent in understanding how to personally communicate and interact with your consumers. Uh, one of the things that becomes really important in that whole communications concept is how frequent uh, consumers are open to uh, interacting with you. Uh, in a lot of cases, you can ask. In a lot of cases, you can actually in, uh, understand that by looking at their at their activity. How often do they will log on to your web app? How often do they log on to your website? Uh, how often do they interact with you? All of these things become digital signatures to determine when they will interact, uh, how they want to be interacted with, and more importantly, how open they are to receiving all these capabilities. The other powerful part of this graph analytics and machine learning is all of these different decision points, uh, you can actually use your graph platform to write machine learning algorithms uh, to in, uncover a algorithm to determine someone's uh, intention to purchase. Uh, when is their expectedness purchase date? What would be their next best product category? Um, when they will become a gift buyer as opposed to just an individual purchaser. All of these components contribute to real-time machine learning that can be ran as someone's actually interacting with your website in a real-time manner. Last, what we'll kind of talk about is the concept of improving customer retention. Um, this is part of the algorithms that looks at link prediction or the lack of a link prediction. Uh, so you can go through and start running that sessionization analysis to look at the lifetime value of a consumer, how often they purchase, how often you see them on one of your digital properties, be it an app or a website, uh, and be able to understand that the average person who spent, you know, 1500 bucks a year, they're going to go six weeks before they make their next purchase. So now I can start creating communities of people to determine what their expected retention date is. So you can leverage the machine learning to do that as well. Uh, additionally, you can go through and start leveraging machine learning algorithms to improve your marketing, your campaign offers and your advertisement as well to understand not only what are the characteristics of your consumers, but what's their, what's their usage pattern, what digital information you have for them and how they actually want to see their offers. You know, I know the image style to use to actually send an offer. If I'm going to make an offer of a skirt, do I know what the purchaser's favorite color is? All these things contribute to personalization, improving your offers, and then understanding how to market and interact with people based on their lifetime value. Uh, last but not least, uh, just from a platform standpoint, the ability to provide this connected data to look at a 360 degree view of your customer, to leverage that information on a platform that allows you to run real-time machine algorithms to do next best purchase, product recommendations, and improve your customization and personalization is the power and the benefit you get from machine learning and graph databases. Thank you very much for your time. You guys have a good day.